Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel and welcome to yet another conference. All honor, glory, and praise be to our one and only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, I don't know who this message is going to resonate with um, today, but I want you to know that God will take care of you. Oh my gosh. Can I get into it? God will take care of you. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you something about this world and this matrix, what I'm hearing first and foremost, and all these structures and setups and pitfalls and, and flashy things that Satan has set up around us. Now, let me make my clarification. I'm not saying that the things set up around us, oh, just because somebody um, made something or created something that they're Satan. I'm talking about the, the force that is behind all of the materialism and the idolatry and the lust of the eyes and stuff that is in this world that is causing people to be distracted from God. So I'm not talking about the people um, per se. I'm talking about the devil himself. Let me tell you something. The God of this world, little G, is Satan the devil and what he has done he has set up a system that has made your life more difficult than it would have been had it not been set up what do I mean by that well I've done a previous video about how it all started in nature you understand what I'm saying it started with the trees and it started with the grass and all of that and there was a time when if a man wanted to build a home for himself and his family his wife and his children he could go out into nature and he could just you know um, erect his home on a piece of uh, uncharted land or whatever I guess you would call that or something that somebody else had not claimed word it that way you understand and he could build his family but now we live in a world where you have to jump through hoops it seems like almost literally just to get a house and where a man he can take a wife he can have children but a man is not even allowed and permitted due to his finances nowadays to even own a home and provide a home for his wife and children unless he jumps through some hoops to get it i tell you what let me tell you something especially for you brothers out there of any nationality you get a wife and you have some children nowadays and you go find a, a group of trees and you go try to chop down some trees nowadays and see those um <laughs> you might be walking away in handcuffs why because the land has been claimed you know it's almost like there's nowhere in this world that you can go nowadays and just enjoy what God has provided for humanity naturally because everybody wants to name and claim everything because in owning the land they own the trees and owning the trees they own the grass and owning the grass they own the rocks and owning the rocks they own the dirt people want to own everything and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people wanting to own land or you know discovering territories and you know they want to claim or whatever but when you've got somebody that wants to confiscate and own everything and leave everybody else outside on the sidewalk to die and live like a dog that is wrong it is wrong when a man is not permitted to go out and build a home if he so desire for his wife and his children so that they don't have to sleep outside or sleep in a shelter or sleep at a relative's house or you know go somewhere and be dependent upon the system of this world to provide food for his family there was a time when a man could go and build a home and you could have a garden you could have farm animals and things of that nature and you could live off the land you can't even live off the land now because nowadays it's like if you don't go to the grocery store you know unless you have a little small garden in your backyard or something like that you're going to starve to death because the system of this world has made you dependent upon itself and whoever feeds you is who feels they call the shots it's no different than um, as it pertains to uh, finances Whoever controls your finances feels they control the shop. Excuse me, that they call the shop. And if it were not for the intervention of the Almighty God, they would. That's why people want control of your money. That's why people want control of uh, your finances, what you eat, uh, what you buy, how you buy it. That's why you're not allowed to live independently in this world. Because, the, you know, there is somebody out there, I was going to say the powers that be, whoever that is, um, want you depend upon them because humanity has a slave to master mentality there's always going to be a group of folk that want to be in charge of everybody else's life and I'm not saying that this world should um, uh, has, uh, can exist without management no we need management in the world because we've got some new screws out there that um, 
are not self-disciplined and they don't want to fall under the discipline and correction of other people. You understand? So we need discipline in this world. I'm not saying that. So let me make that cl uh, clarification right there. But this is what I am saying. Anytime that you live in a world that does not allow you the freedom to own a home and not and, and, and not be stressed out about keeping your home and, and, and own your vehicles and not be stressed out about keeping your vehicles, you live in a very sin sick world. And even though, you know, a lot of times as it pertains to this life, people say, oh, well, it's business. It's not personal. Well, it may be business, but it's all still dependent upon the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Because money is the God of this world, little g. Money is the God of this world. Something that was created by humanity that has absolutely nothing to do with God Almighty. When Jesus came down here, you, do you really think that Jesus was concerned about finances? No, no, mm -mm. Jesus was not concerned about finances. Jesus was concerned that you focus on him. Jesus was concerned that you live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You understand that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And a lot of you are stressed out and probably saying, well, I'm not in heaven yet, uh, sister. I'm down here and I am stressed out. And you don't know the bills that I have. And you don't know the this that I have. And da, 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 da. Jesus said, take no thought. And you may say, well, look, my sister, I, 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 I want to do what Jesus tells me to do, but I do care. If I told God I didn't care about losing what I have, about trying to gain what I don't have, I would be lying. But let me tell you something. There's something about walking in the spirit of Jesus Christ that will cause this world and its problems to fade into the background. You understand? Because this world didn't make you and this world can't break you. And I know it's easier said than done. And I'm not saying that we don't have to fight to stay alive. Why do you think they say earn a living? Earn a living because you have to earn your way to stay alive. If you don't earn your living, you're going to die out of the living. You're going to die out of the living. You're going to die. It's like you got to pay to live. That's why they say earn your living. You got to pay to stay alive on planet Earth because you got to buy food to eat to stay alive. And you got to pay for medical care, which is ridiculous. You got to pay to be buried. That's even more ridiculous. You got to pay to go back in the ground that God Almighty took you out of. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Do you see the systematic setup of this world? Do you see the foolery and the buffoonery and all of that? The ways of this world are foolishness to God. It don't make no kind of sense. And a lot of people may say, well, there are other mechanics that come into play as it pertains to burial and all of that. You know, people got to, uh, you got to pay the people that constructed the caskets. You got to pay the people that, you know, are going to hold the funeral. You got to pay the people that, you know, are going to do whatever the funeral preparations are. I understand all of that. But back in the olden days, if somebody died, you just, you know, you made a casket out of wood and they went back into the earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. For dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return. But I understand we don't live, you know, in the 1800s anymore and we don't live in the 1500s or whatever you want to call it or 1700s we don't live in that era anymore but this is what i am trying to say do you see all the things that have been erected around you to stress you out that should not be that's why jesus is saying cast your cares upon me meaning himself oh my gosh god knows that the ways of this world is foolishness of course it's foolishness it makes no sense to have all these trees on this planet and you've got people outside living in tent communities to have all this land on planet Earth and you've got people that don't even own a, a half an acre because they can't afford it. There are people that, let me tell you something, they may have nice homes, they may have nice cars and land, but by the time a lot of them get it paid for, it's time for them to get up out of here. Have you ever noticed that? By the time you retire and, and it's your period of time to enjoy your life, how many years, realistically speaking, do you really feel you have in front of you? Because most likely you will have more behind you than in front of you. You see how this world will set you up? People can die. You got to pay to bury somebody. You mean to tell me people got to pay all these thousands of dollars to dig a ditch in the earth and place a corpse in it? And I'm not saying that disrespectfully, but that's what a lifeless body is. It's a corpse. It's going to rot and it's going to return back into the dust from which it was taken. Now you think about that thing. Does that make any kind of sense? 